1945, at the time, I had just turned 23. On the 6th of August, I had a role to play uh, as the weapon test officer on the Enola Gay mission to Hiroshima, Japan. So I was a civilian employee of the University of California, which was the manager for Los Alamos. And the job that I ended up doing there was developing the detonators that made the Fat Man bomb viable. People say, what'd you do in those early days? And my answer is always, whatever I was told to do. And I guess uh, I wasn't learned enough or sophisticated enough to appreciate what it meant in the long run for the future of the world. When Paul called me you know, about the project, and he got a hold of me one night and said, Dutch, I'm forming a new group. He says, I'd like to have you for my group navigator. He says, I can't tell you what it is, but he says, if it works, we are going to either significantly shorten or end the war. We had been waiting for the results of the test in New Mexico, which we learned had been successful. Captain Parsons gave a briefing he had witnessed the Trinity test, and uh, he had brought movies to show us the projector failed. So he told about the test, and he said truly it was a gigantic explosion, maybe in the 10 to 20 uh, kiloton range. And that certainly, those numbers certainly had impact with all of us. We knew it was going to be a big weapon. The little boy bomb was a situation in which you have uranium-235, which is almost ready to explode. And you shoot a slug of uranium into a hollow cylinder of uranium, and each of those was almost ready to go off all by itself. But when you combine the two of them, suddenly the chain reaction goes ahead and it explodes. I guess it was the 5th of August. We were assembled, and it was explained to us that we were gonna leave early the next morning. There was a big ceremony there, and lights set up, and TV cameras, and Admiral Parsons, and Tibbets, and the crews were all standing around. We had our picture taken, too. And then finally, they just said, okay. And we got on, got on an airplane, of course, we were very nervous. There were three planes. First of all, the Enola Gay, the one that had the bomb. Then our, our plane, the great artiste carrying our instruments for measuring the energy. And finally, there was a plane with observers that were going to take movies and stuff like that. Climbed very slowly on the way. Navy Captain Parsons, he and Morris Jepson went back in the bomb bay and armed the bomb in flight at low altitude. I had the job of going in the bomb bay, switching those plugs from testing mode to arming mode. And I have the, I guess the, uh, maybe I was the last one to touch the bomb. The weather is perfect. I could see the coast of Japan from a good 100 miles away. I could see the city of Hiroshima from 50 miles away. And by this time, you know, the bomb site is flying the airplane on the automatic pilot. That's the way it works. And so we went in and finally the bomb left the airplane. I knew that it had 43 seconds of drop time before it would detonate above the ground. So I started counting. Everybody on that airplane is counting. 1,001, 1,000. I think we all concluded almost that the bomb was a dud. At 43 seconds, nothing happened. And I only had a second or two to have that kind of worry because then the bomb did detonate. The whole inside of the airplane just was a big white flash, just lit up. And then the airplane had quite a shock. We flew around for a bit as the mushroom cloud uh, grew 
and we, we could see down on the ground a curtain of dust was spreading out. You could see the destruction on the ground and you knew that meant uh, where people live, where people uh, died. The reaction was one of almost disbelief. We really didn't think the bomb could be that powerful. No one spoke with glee. That sort of uh, expression was not used. I was busy doing my things, but also I did not feel the urge to pray for anybody at that point. You, I probably should have. Why not? But uh, I didn't. In my notebook, all I wrote was, it went off. It really did. It really did. <laughs> we dropped the bomb. We dropped it on time, on target. And that's what we were trained to do and what we wanted to do. And finally, as we got to talking about it a little bit more, there was a feeling that this war was over. When I looked around, it was a pitch black. Then no sound. Then pretty soon, the blackness going away, like a frog go away. You know. Then see sort of a gray and moving people. I thought, 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 足が飛んでる人、お腹が弾けて内臓が飛び出てる人、頭が割れて脳みそが飛び出てる人、そして爆心中の吹いたは真っ黒炭素化してそのまま死んでる人、焼けただれて死んでる人、ありとあらゆる